coffee beans. How's it brewing? Welcome to episode three of season two of Spoopy Season. I think I got it that time. <laughs> now, if you haven't already, go watch episodes one and two of Spoopy Season two. Episode one, I made a really awesome haunted house completely out of paper, and it is full of Easter eggs of hidden characters from horror movies over the years, like Chucky is in there, Scooby-Doo is in there, that's not really a horror movie, um, Ghostbusters is in there, um, Carrie is in there, Adam's Family, there's a whole bunch, so go check that out. And last week I did my very own Blythe doll repaint for Madame Leota from the Haunted Mansion, which is my favorite Disneyland attraction. So make sure you go check those out. Now today, I'm gonna be doing a sewing project and it is something I've wanted to do on this channel for a really long time. It's something that is perfect for those of you who want to learn how to sew, have never tried it before, or maybe you're a little bit intimidated. This is something that is perfect because all it involves is socks, just sewing with socks. It's so simple. It's like a sock monkey, but way cuter than a sock monkey. Although sock monkeys are pretty darn cute. This is gonna be a Halloween version. So I'm going to be making a sock plushie of the vampire teddy or the scary teddy from Nightmare Before Christmas. So what we will need are some socks, some polyfill, although you could use like an old pillow or you could use an old stuffed animal, like repurpose a stuffed animal, but I'm using polyfill today. You will also need some pins. You don't necessarily need pins, but it makes life easier. You can use any kind of sewing needles, but I got these extra big ones so it's easier for you to see. And we're gonna be using black socks. Normally with most sock plushies, you only need two pairs of socks. However, for this one, we are going to use four socks, mainly because one of the designs are these little ears. They almost look like Mickey Mouse ears, to be honest. But the leftover fabric from the sock we would use is this like ribbed part that goes on your ankle, and that's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna use an extra black sock. The thread I'm using is actually like really heavy duty, like upholstery thread. And again, that's just to make it easier for you guys to see. Um, you can use any kind of thread you want. And lastly, I'm gonna be using some felt. This is like off-white kind of cream color felt and black felt, and also some fabric paint, which I didn't get out, but I'll get that later. Now, this craft is based off of another YouTube video I saw from Pink Sugar Cotton, where she made like a little kawaii monkey. Um, and I saw that and thought it would be a perfect kind of example for the scary teddy, so that's what I'm going to be following. I'll put a link to that video down below. She makes the cutest things, oh my gosh. So again, if you're a beginner sewer, Go check her out after this. Don't leave yet, I'm watching you. Go check her out so you can learn some other cute designs to make too. Another really awesome channel to watch is Budget Hobby. Oh, I love her. She is where I first discovered sock plushies and her stuff is so awesome if you're into nerdy things like I am. So go check her out too after this. Don't you leave, I'm watching you. So the first thing we are going to make is the head. We only need one sock and we're gonna leave it right side out. I'm just gonna stuff it with polyfill, just like a really big ball. I'm actually going to use the other socks that came in the pack to put inside the black sock to add some um, extra like coverage. You've got mail. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word extra coverage between the polyfill and the sock because otherwise you're gonna be able to see the polyfill through the sock. This is totally optional. You do not have to do this. There we go. Nice, beautiful, like a little sock puppet. Okay, now I can stuff it. Okay, I think that is a good head shape. I usually do about a finger width and then I cut off the extra. I always do extra thread too longer than I need, because I'd rather have more than not enough. Now we are going to sew this closed with a running stitch, and so I like to start on the inside to hide my knot. And this is the easiest stitch ever. It's just down and up. I like to imagine it's like a dolphin 
or a whale or a narwhal because I love narwhals. Diving into the water and diving back out of the water. Diving into the water and out. Like that, so simple. So you should have your thread that kind of looks like this. And then all you do is you just pull it tight while tucking in all this extra sock. And it's okay if it's a little bit messy because this is gonna get hidden when it connects to the body anyway. I like to do a couple passes like this just to really keep that tight closure while I tie the knot. And to tie the knot is really simple and it's something I learned from Budget Hobby as well is you just stick your knot, your needle through and then take the other end that's coming out of the fabric and you just wrap it around the needle a couple times and then pull the thread through and it creates its own little knot. How easy is that, right? It's so easy. And then my personal favorite way to hide the end of the thread, I actually do this when I crochet, when I make amigurumi, is I just poke the needle in, bring it out somewhere else, pull it so there's a little bit of tension, and then just cut off, and then massage the stuffing, and the tail disappears right inside. How easy is that, right? So now we have a nice big ball, and this is going to be the head. All right, so now we're gonna make the body. So we're gonna take our sock and turn it inside out. And then you want the heel of the sock, this, to lay flat like that and up and kind of out of the way. And we're just gonna draw a really basic kind of foot shape. The heel is gonna be the butt. So keep that in mind. That's kind of where we want the legs. I'm trying my best to kind of keep it even. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a little a little sock plushie. Plus, it's from Halloween Town and they didn't know what the heck they were doing when they were making Christmas toys, so it's okay if it's a little weird. There's just kind of like a rough idea of what it could look like. So now I am going to do a back stitch along those lines. And a back stitch is I mean, you could think of that same narwhal just doing backflips in the ocean. <laughs> it's just loop-de-loops. It's nice and simple. So we went down and then up. Now I'm gonna go about halfway back, go down and then back up just like that. And we made a nice loop-de-loop. -loop. And so we'll go back down. You're going right back into the stitch. Down and then back up. So it's all sewn, now we just need to cut around. And you could leave a little bit of a border. You don't wanna cut right against those stitches. And I'm already looking and I think I may have made the legs a little stumpy, but that's okay. <laughs> and then we will just flip it out. Oh my gosh, these legs are kinda tiny and stumpy. Ah, that's okay, it's like really super cute. <laughs> Not what I intended, but it is still really hilarious. And what I did forget to do was actually line this with my blue sock um, because I don't want the polyfill throw so polyfill showing through. So I'm gonna do the same thing really quick for my blue sock and stuff it in. Okay, I'm back with the second one. So I'm flipping the black one the right way, the right direction. And I'm gonna put the blue one in. I'm gonna match up the heels because those are the butts. <laughs> this is like a weird, what does this look like? This is like a demented like spider. <laughs> I'm just using the socks to grab stuff now. So the butts are lined up or the heels and I'm gonna stuff the legs first. Now I'm going to stuff the rest of the body kind of like we did with the head. I don't, you know, we, let's overstuff, especially for the butt. The butt. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at how pudgy and cute this is. It is so stinking cute. Oh my gosh. Yes. Look at how adorable that is. That is so freaking cute. He's his little tummy. What the heck? <laughs> Like I said before, I like to do about a finger length and then I cut off all this excess. Careful you don't cut yourself. I have done that before. It's not fun. And then we're just gonna do another running stitch like we did before. Oh 
Oh my gosh, it's so stinking cute. Look at his little butt, his little tummy, his little feet. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. He's supposed to be an evil teddy bear, not cute. Who am I kidding? It's spoopy, right? So it's cute scary. <laughs> spoopy. If you're like me and you love all things cute and spoopy and everything in between, then you would fit right in with the Coffee Bean family. You should subscribe so you can become a Coffee Bean too. And make sure you click that bell so you get notified whenever I post and you don't lose me to the big wide world of YouTube. I upload videos every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So now is the tricky part, or it's tricky for me. It's probably not tricky for anyone else. Basically, we're gonna be pinning the head to the body. I feel like the head's gonna make the body fall over. <laughs> the head is definitely more heavy than the body, but whatever. Let me get one in first, just to hopefully hold it in place. <laughs> I think I kinda got it. It's a little lopsided still. You know what, we're gonna leave it. It's fine, this works. It's in about where I want it. So I am just gonna start sewing and hope for the best, right? That's all we can do sometimes is just craft and hope for the best. The reason it's important to pin this if you can is because I've noticed that as I stitch, the head will start to twist and then my shaping and the sock and everything looks weird. So pinning it is important because it gets it where you want it. Also, keep the circumference of where it's attached pretty even. I have typically gone like a really small diameter and then the head just is like blah, blah, blah. So it's better if you do a wide circle of stitches. All right, so I'm gonna hide my knot as best as I can by just kind of stabbing it like up in the middle of the neck and then back down the other side. Now we are going to be doing ladder stitches, which are a little bit more tricky, but not bad. You just want to picture a ladder. Okay, so I got it coming through the head. We're gonna go down into the body and then going across the body and back out the other side like that. Then you're gonna go back up to the head and across. This is why it's called a ladder stitch is because you are creating rungs on a ladder. So we'll go back down to the body and across. Make sure while you're sewing that the thread gets stuck on the legs every time. That's a very important step. Every time, it, they need to get stuck on the legs. Oh, every time, without fail. Oh, also stab yourself with the pins. That's also very important. No, really don't stab yourself with the pins. Don't do it, it hurts. But you can tell everyone that you literally put your blood, sweat, and tears into the into the project. Oh, here we are, getting stuck on the legs again. Perfect. Thanks for being here. All right, now, this is the moment of truth. He looks, honestly, kind of like Sally, truthfully. Basically, we're going to very carefully pull the, uh, the thread. This is why I like to use thicker thread, like upholstery thread, because you're gonna be pulling this and tightening all those stitches. <gasps> oh my gosh! It turned out good. Maybe I shouldn't be like that surprised considering I'm teaching you guys how to make something. Now, any thread that does show here is not a big deal because, well, one, you guys would probably be using black, not white like me, but also he's gonna be wearing a little cape. So his cape is gonna cover any stitches that might show. Oh my gosh, it actually attached really well. Although I can already tell that he's a little top heavy. So it is time to make the arms and I'm actually gonna use a whole fresh sock for this. I'm just gonna turn it inside out. Now I think I'm gonna make the arms, I feel like I wanna make them kinda big just to be on the safe side. That is a big arm, holy moly. Now I'm not gonna line this with a blue sock because these don't get stuffed that much with stuffing. So. I don't think you'll even see the polyfill through it. All right, and then to stitch this is just a back stitch like we did for um, the body. Okay, and now these are currently 
totally sealed because it was the edge of the sock, but that's really easy to fix. Just very carefully cut off the edge. Not a lot of stuffing at all. They're just very lightly stuffed. Okay, so we do have to attach these to our scary teddy, um, and we are gonna use the ladder stitch. I am going to pin his arms. Now the reason this is a little bit tricky is because you're not stitching through both layers of the arm into the body. We're gonna be stitching through this part and then this part, so like in a circle like we did for the head, and that does make it a little tricky. Again, it's the ladder stitch, so I'm gonna stick my needle through. Go super slow when doing this, because it really, it's not, it's not easy. But I have found that this is the best seamless way to add arms or anything to these sock plushies. Okay, so I got the bottom part done, so now I'm gonna work on the top part. And again, going really slow. Then, we got all those ugly stitches, but if we pull it and tighten it, you can push all that extra fabric in, and it disappears. Okay, so we don't need to worry too much about this ugly knot at the bottom because we are going to be making the hand go like this. So I am just going to feed my needle into the arm, not on the other side, just through the middle of the arm where the stuffing is, up towards like the palm of the hand, just like that. And then I am going to stitch it to the tummy, just like that. So it stays down. Now time to do the other arm. Okay, both arms are attached. Now the last thing to do with the socks is some ears. So taking my extra sock, um, I'm gonna make ears kind of the same way that I made the arms. Oh, gotta turn it inside out first. Then I'm just going to backstitch these together. The ears are all sewn and cut. I'm just gonna flip them. Oh my gosh, they're tiny. <laughs> I meant for them to be a lot bigger. Um, however, the scary teddy in the movie does have smaller ears. I was definitely visualizing more along the lines of Mickey Mouse. Um, but you know what? This works. This is just fine. This is hilarious. Now I'm just going to lightly stuff these just like we did with the arms. Seriously, not a lot of stuffing at all. I think I'm going to attach them about right here. I think that is a pretty good spot. So I'm gonna sew these on with a ladder stitch and I'll be right back. Okay, he is all sewn together. We are almost done with sewing. All we have left to do is his face. This just looks like a straight up Mickey Mouse right now. Um, but I have this kind of off-white cream felt that I'm going to attempt to trace into a face for him. Oh my gosh. I'm going to pin this in place where I know it needs to be stitched down because we're basically trying to put something that's flat on a curved surface. You know like when you're putting a pattern on a pumpkin and you have to cut the little slits and it folds over? That's basically what we have to do with this. Keeping in mind that his little cape is gonna cover up some of this. And also he has a really big smile and I think his smile will help to cover some of this too. Oh yes, perfect. So what you could totally do is glue this down. I think I am going to sew it though. So I got the stitches started. So the stitch I'm using is called a whip stitch or I've seen it called a felt stitch. And basically you are putting the needle up through one side, down through the other side, and then you're going at a diagonal so that it comes back up a little bit further up. I think this is giving it a really nice handmade look if that's the style you want to go for. 
Of course, like I said, you could always glue this. You could even hot glue this. Make your life so much easier. How fantastic does this look, right? Oh my gosh. So we just have to give him his little cape and then it's all fabric paint. Nice and simple. His cape is just a piece of black felt. I made this little mock-up of my beige felt so that I can cut my black felt kind of to a similar size. What's nice too is his cape just looks like tattered fabric. So this really does not need to be perfect. Oh my gosh, look at this little freaking guy. Okay, now this needs to be kind of in strips, so I'm just gonna cut little shapes, little rough kind of triangle shapes. There's three of them. Perfect. So the very last thing I am going to sew is attaching this cape to the body with just like the simplest like X-shaped stitch. Yes! All right. Look at him! Look at what we sewed! Oh my gosh, he looks amazing. He just needs his fabric paint face and that is it. Now you may have noticed that he is just solid black. Now the original has white hands and white feet and also his cape and jacket, um, basically all of the black on him have white stripes and I think it's supposed to be like pinstripe like Jack Skellington, but I decided to leave him very simple, completely black, um, because I didn't want it to be too much sewing for you if this is your first time sewing. That's also why I just did fabric paint for the face instead of felt or fabric for the face, um, because that would be way more stitching than we need to do. And just a little trick that I'm going to share with you is I have a couple places by the ears where the white thread is showing. So I'm gonna use the tiniest bit of black fabric paint to hide those knots. Now, to add one last final touch, I am going to fill up that kind of empty space by his hands with one of these little jack-o'-lanterns. They're so spoopy. Attaching this with some hot glue in that middle so he looks like he's holding the jack-o'-lantern is adorable. It's perfect. Teddy turned out. Which Nightmare Before Christmas character is your favorite? Or which Halloween movie is your favorite? I like to play Nightmare Before Christmas all the way from October 1st through the end of December. Not every day, of course, because I have other movies I like to sprinkle in, but it's definitely a holiday classic. I'm so happy I could finally share a sock plushie with you guys. It is something I have wanted to make since I started this channel. So woohoo, we finally made one. If you make this scary teddy, any sock plushie or anything for that matter, please share it with me. You can tag me on Instagram at bunnydiy so I can see because I love to see everything you guys make. There's only one week left for spoopy season, so I'll see you next Monday. Thanks for watching everyone. Love you a latte. Oh,